So uh, not too long ago, I had uh, a patient, as has happened on numerous times in the past, they asked me, what do I do when I go on vacation? I'm going to be gone for two weeks. I'm going to be gone for three weeks. How on earth am I going to manage without my adjustments? And I just lovingly and respectfully tell them, you won't. But actually, that's not true. Because you do, you can, uh, you can manage, but obviously you need to get adjusted. We're going to share some cool studies that, that talk about that. Um, but um, what I want to show you is what are some things that you can do to improve and maintain the integrity of your spine. Because the reason you get adjusted is to improve the integrity of your spine, right? Okay. So uh, getting adjusted, though, is not just about... Uh, having it's it's not just about holding your adjustments in other words the more you do for yourself the better you hold your adjustments but the purpose of you doing everything you do is not to hold your adjustments and so i'm going to talk a little bit about that and to start out um by show of hands please everybody um, but by show of hands who brushed their teeth this morning or last night or within the last week at least okay okay thank you okay so uh, um maribeth why on earth did you brush your teeth Okay, for oral hygiene. So, so you brush your teeth, not just so you don't offend people with your bad breath, but you do it because it's a good idea, because you might get to keep your teeth. Because, am I correct? If you don't brush your teeth, you won't keep them, right? Is that a surprise to anyone? Okay, good, we're all on the same page. So, the reason we brush our teeth, is it because we have pain in our teeth and therefore we would brush them? Do we want to wait till there's pain in our teeth before we brush? No, of course, that's absurd, right? Well, what about getting adjusted? Should we wait until we have pain to get adjusted? No. And you guys know that, but most people out in our community don't understand that, right, Peggy? They just don't understand that. And so, so I want to talk to you and give you some resources. First of all, you're, we're going to talk about why it's important to uh, have good spinal hygiene and what spinal hygiene is. Getting adjusted is part of that. It's only part of the picture, though. And then give, some, give you some resources on what you can do. So raise your hand if you, have, if you recognize this little guy swimming in water, if you've taken a health risk assessment. Jenny has. Okay, a handful of you. That means uh, many of you have not you don't recognize this guy. Um, there's something that we use called a health risk assessment. It's a wonderful tool where you can self-analyze your health, the lifestyle habits that you are making that are either creating health and wellness for you or they are creating sickness and disease for you. That's really, would you agree that your lifestyle is creating your health or your sickness? It's not the other guy. It's, you know, not like our kids, right, Michael? It's, it's not always the other guy. It's, it's us. We are creating it for, for ourselves. Um, so we do have, uh, if you have not taken your health risk assessment and you have a desire, it really doesn't matter to me if you take it or not. Um, but if you do have a desire uh, to take a health risk assessment and you haven't done that, I highly recommend it. I'll tell you the first time I took my, my first one, it was very informative for me because I was able to self-assess the habits that I had and according to the evidence, what was good and what was bad about those, those habits. Um, if you'd like to do that, just chat with Kayla when we're all done. Um, the, the cost, on, the part of the cost for that is about five bucks. Um, we actually pay more than that for them. Um, but if you'd like to take that, if you just pay Kayla five bucks and we'll, you can do that. So we're, we're eating some of those costs, but I think it's very beneficial for you. So I also recommend that you do it every three months, every 90 days, self-assess. See where you're at and make sure you're on track. So this is a picture of a guy and he's kind of swimming in, in some water and his hands are out there and he's got these little floaties on you can imagine some little floaties um, but he has his backpack on and that backpack is empty which means there's no extra weight and if you don't have extra weight in your backpack does it make sense you have a better chance of treading water and staying on top of the water make sense now michael what's going to happen if you put a rock just one moderate sized rock in that that backpack is it going to be tougher to tread water, okay? And uh, Fred, what if you put another rock in there? Will it be a little tougher to tread water? Yeah. And then Claude, if you put another rock in there, do you see how it's gonna get heavier and heavier? And, and the more rocks you put in this backpack, the heavier that backpack is, 
which means the more you're going to have, the harder you're going to have to work to stay up on top of the water. Well, those rocks are like your habits, your lifestyle habits. Um, this individual, you can see um, their wellness and prevention index score is only 49. That's, that means they're living at less than half of their potential. Just so you know, 90 or above is really good. It means you're on the right track, you're, you're, you're healthy. Anything less than 90, you're moving in the wrong direction. So if your score was less than 90, it's a good idea to have that assessment so you can look at it yourself. What it means is you have some lifestyle habits that are killing you. Very slowly, you may or may not have symptoms. I had somebody who came in earlier today, and they were telling me, I had actually hadn't seen this guy since last August. It's been a long time since he'd been adjusted. And he came in and told me about his job where he has to drive. And when he drives, um, he's got to have, you know, um, he's got to be healthy. And uh, he'd had this uh, health check, and they found out that his blood pressure was way too high. And he's driving over the road, and his blood pressure is too high. They pull his license. And so he actually, by having ill health, high blood pressure, it actually affected his ability to make money. So um, a lot of people, though, when they do this health risk assessment, um, I had, I've had a few people, not very many, but a few. I had this one guy come in after he took his health risk assessment, and he got a score um, around 50-something. And you look at him and he looks like he's really healthy and fit. You really wouldn't think that he's you know, got any problems, but his score is just about, you know, just over 50. And he says, you know, I have a problem with that HRA. And I says, tell me, what's the problem? He says, I, I don't agree with it. What do you think I told him? Too bad. <laughs> I said, okay, <laughs> in a nicer way than too bad, but you know, okay. It doesn't really matter to me if you agree with it. In other words, what he was saying is, I have a really terrible couple of, a few really terrible habits, and I'm not going to give them up. That's what he told me. And, and I said, that's fine. It doesn't matter to me if you give them up or not. I really don't care. I love you just the same. And so no matter what your score is, it doesn't matter to me. Now, it matters in a way because I really want you to be healthy and but, but it's your health is your decision, it's your choice. So I want to provide the resources and really empower you to make the choices. And, and uh, the health risk assessment is designed to help you make better choices. The key is the evidence doesn't lie. What the evidence says, if you eat five vegetables a day, you're going to be healthier than if you don't eat five vegetables a day. Does that make sense? That's not really news to anyone. Now, we all love to eat vegetables, right? Okay, there, I love to eat vegetables. Some people just tell me, I'm not eating vegetables. I said, okay, but you gotta live with the consequences. You can't escape the consequences. So um, what we're specifically talking about tonight is one aspect that will help your health improve. In other words, your health risk assessment. Um, now, what I love about rodents is they are very, very good for studies. We learn a lot from rodents, and we're gonna talk about two different rodents tonight. But this specific study that they did, they actually got these little baby rabbits, and they immobilized their arms. In other words, so they couldn't bend it. It was like if you broke your arm and you put it in a cast, made it to where you couldn't move it. Now, though they, they you know, immobilized the, the elbows of these uh, rabbits. And what they did is they took pictures, they took x-rays, they did all kinds of imaging on these rabbits at varying different times of the length of time that they had these joints immobilized to see what would happen to the joints. So has anyone here ever, here ever broken an arm or broken something like that? Okay, Stephanie, when you broke, uh, when you broke an arm, did it immobilize one of your joints? It was my wrist. Your wrist, okay, so you couldn't remove your wrist for a few weeks, six weeks probably, right? After six weeks, and you took that cast off, did you just all of a sudden have all the strength and mobility to your wrist? No, it took a little bit of time to get you know, things flowing and right on, things flowing and, uh, and moving the way they're supposed to. Well, what they found was with the, when they immobilized the joints of these rabbits, within 24 hours, they saw degenerative changes. Within 24 hours. But within two weeks, the degenerative changes, meaning arthritis, was permanent. And the longer it went after two weeks, the more damage occurred. 
So raise your hand if you've had x-rays taken here and you found that there is some degeneration in your spine. And tell me, um, if you had some degeneration in your spine, would you have rathered not have that degeneration in your spine? Of course. Yeah, of course, right? So, but once it's there, it's there. It's, it's semi-permanent to permanent. And so my goal tonight is to help you understand how you don't ever have to let it advance. Because the longer it's there, the research shows that it's going to be more and more immobilized. So movement is critical to every joint in your body, but we're talking specifically tonight with the, with the spine. So what happens inside your brain, Peter knows this, but I don't know if anyone else even understands this yet, um, but what happens inside your brain when joints, specifically in your spine, move? It's called proprioception. Now, I need everybody to do a little experiment with me. Make sure you don't hit your neighbor, but get your right arm and bring it out here like this, okay? And then bring it up here like this, and then bring it down here like this, and bring it up here like this, and bring it down here like this. Now, close your eyes and do the same thing three times. And then keep your eyes closed. Stop the movement when it's in the upright position. Okay, you can open your eyes. Keep your arm there. Every one of you stopped your arm in the upright position. How did you know how to do that? Your eyes were closed. Say again. I told you, but how did you know it was in the upright position? The brain, the brain and what's called proprioception. So you have this. It's amazing. You're, God made us to be able to know what, how things are moving without you being able to see it. You feel it. Now, proprioception, that's a very general, basic way to describe proprioception. It goes much deeper than that, which we'll talk about. But the key is movement of the joint, specifically the brain... I'm sorry, movement of the joint specifically causes what's called proprioception, which makes a cascade of uh, events that take place act uh, uh, later on, eventually into the cortex, which will create something called ATP, which is energy. Energy that makes every cell in your body work happens because of joint motion to the spine. In fact, it was, uh, I believe it was Richard Sperry or Roger Sperry, I can't remember for sure, 1981, Nobel Prize winner. He said that movement to the spine is analogous to the movement of a windmill inside a power plant. In other words, when your spine moves, you are creating energy in your brain just by having your spine move. So having your spine move is gonna reduce arthritis and degeneration like we already talked with, with the rabbits, but also create energy. So there are some problems that occur though when pr something goes bad with proprioception. They did this other study with some different rat, uh, rodents with some rats. Now what happens is constantly every joint in the body will detect the movement that's taking place and then send a message up into the brain to let the brain know the position and how everything's going, the proprioception. What they did with these rats, though, is they took uh, and they built up one of the molars on one of the teeth. Some of you have shared this study in the past. And what they did is they built it up a half of a millimeter so that it would cause a crossbite, so they would have abnormal joint function in the jaw. What that did is it upset the normal proprioception in the jaw. And within one week, because of the messages from here going up to the brain, and then the brain interpreting it, and then sending another message down into the parts of the body to let the brain know how it's going, or to let the body know how the, it's, it's going, that joint function is, after one week of building up the molars on just one side, this took place for 100% of the rats. Exactly. A terrible scoliosis. So what's really interesting about this is then they decided, well, what will happen if we put, build up the other molar on the other side, a half a millimeter, to bring it back to where it's balanced? So in other words, bring the joint function back to normal or closer to normal. It's not normal because now the teeth are taller, but brought it back to closer to normal. And within one week, that happened. So let me ask you this. Is proper joint function important for your health? 
If you have a scoliosis, like in that middle picture, does it make sense your joint function is off? And with that, you're gonna have abnormal brain function. So it's, a good, it's better than a good idea. You must have full range of motion to every joint in your body. We're talking specifically the spine. How do you do that? We're gonna talk about some resources that are available. But before I do that, I wanna talk about something called pain. Who's ever experienced any pain? Pain in their back or their neck. Okay, so here's what happens. When the joints move, you get that stimulus called proprioception goes up into the brain. When your joints don't move, there is a stimulus that goes up into the cerebellum of the brain, the hind part of the brain, and from there, it's called nociception. And what happens is if, uh, right there in the cerebellum, it's not conscious thought, it's all subconscious. You are not aware of what's happening. But if nothing happens to stop the progression of that nociception of getting to the cortex, to the upper part here, if it goes to the cortex, you will have the emotion of pain. So what's critical is you can have nociception, in other words, lack of joint motion, for a long period of time, which will cause degeneration arthritis, but you're not experiencing pain because the nociceptive uh, uh, impulses are not actually reaching the cortex. So who wants to know how to make sure that you stop the progression of nociception reaching the cortex, meaning you're never gonna feel pain? Who would like to know that? Peggy, Melanie, okay, good. It's really simple. Movement. Movement of the joints stimulates proprioception. Lack of movement to the joints stimulates nociception. So you must keep the joints moving. And therefore, when you get adjusted, all I do when I adjust you is create joint motion. That's all I do. I'm not taking an alley away. I'm you know, not rubbing you to make you feel better. I'm just adjusting you. And the only goal is to get motion. But the secondary goal is to move you in the right direction so that when you leave this office, you can move better all the time so you don't have to come in and get adjusted every day. You can hold your adjustments longer like Eileen. Um, remove the big stressors and you start functioning better. So the key is lack of movement causes nociception, which will lead to pain, can lead to pain, and the proprioception stops all that. I'm gonna share a couple of quick studies. Um, you know, cause people, you know, the insurance company, we don't bill insurance in our office for multiple reasons. This is one of them. The insurance companies have this thing about restricting care. They only want you to have six to 12 visits. Well, there's nothing in the literature that suggests that six to 12 visits is even adequate or even founded on any kind of evidence anywhere. So what they did is they did this, um, this study and they, they reviewed the literature and they found that in six to 12 visits, um, the randomized controlled trials did not support claims of restricting care to six to 12 visits. And these people had headaches, neck pain, uh, cervical brachial or arm, arm uh, head, neck, brain, <laughs> arm <laughs> and neck pain, thank you, um, or upper back pain. So six, 12 visits, it was, it was just not enough. In fact, assuming a constant linear dosage, in other words, you get adjusted consistently, it took a minimum of 24 visits in order to have significant change. 24 visits, but it gets better. There was a different study. They took 60 patients that had low back pain. They had to have low back pain for a minimum of six months. They were randomized to receive either 12 sham adjustments. What's a sham adjustment? Nothing happened. Okay, you, you thought you were getting adjustment, but you really weren't. And I don't really understand, that would be some kind of an adjustment. But anyway, these people had 12 visits in one month, but they didn't get an adjustment. The group two, they got 12 visits, but they received an adjustment. Yay, they're gonna do better, right? You would think. And then the third group, they got 12 adjustments in a month, just like group number two, but the difference was they had follow-up care and adjustment once every other week for nine months. So. What happened? To determine any difference among therapies, we measured pain and disability scores, generic health status and back-specific back patient satisfaction at baseline and at one, four, seven, and 10 months. 
Patients in the second and third groups, meaning they actually got adjustments, experienced significantly lower pain and disability scores in the first group at the end of a month. In other words, something happened to them and they started feeling better. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? All right. However, only the third group that was given adjustments during the follow-up period showed more improvement in pain and disability scores at the 10-month evaluation. In fact, in the non-maintained adjustment group, group two, the mean pain and disability scores returned back to near to their pre-treatment level. In other words, after not having any follow-up care after nine months, it basically went back to where it was before. It's kind of sad. These people invested an awful lot. Well, they didn't, but most of us invest an awful lot. It's a challenge to get your adjustments, isn't it? I have some patients that uh, they're not here tonight, um, but they come in um, almost every week and they drive all the way from grants to get their adjustment. It's a challenge for them to come all the way from grants to get an adjustment. Um, some of you have bigger challenges than others to actually get here. I know, Cheryl, you drive a little ways for your adjustments. You know, and I'm honored that you are willing to drive and take the time to get your adjustments. But it's not just about getting your adjustments. It's about actually doing the things for your health, your spine, that will keep you healthy. The key is, is the more you do spinal hygiene exercises, the longer you will be able to go in between adjustments the healthier you're gonna be in between those adjustments. So, removing the rocks in your backpack, is that a good idea? You'll be able to float better. One of the key things in helping to get rid of some of those rocks is just having good spinal hygiene, taking care of yourself, getting that proprioception, getting that energy production. So there are multiple ways you can do that. Some of you uh, may have taken advantage of sitting on these little red discs some of you may have put those little red discs under your chair, which is okay. Um, some of you may have chosen to sit next to one of the little red discs. Um, so what I want you to know regarding these red discs, they are awesome. You can buy them on Amazon. They're about 20 bucks. Or we have a couple extras available here. You can buy them from us for 25. <laughs> I don't care where you get it, but I think it's a really good idea. You don't have to. But if you do, you will improve your spinal hygiene. What's awesome about it, um, do I have a volunteer who would like to demonstrate how to do the, the, the disc? I didn't ask for anyone, but I'm just going to kind of explain it. I'm not going to demonstrate because i got to stay right here. Um, but if you sit on but you'll be able to watch my hips move. It's kind of cool. So anyway, you, what you do is, in fact, can I have that disc hygiene? So you have this disc. All you do, it's kind of squishy. You sit on it. And as you sit on it, all you do is you go make a circular motion with your hind end. Do that for as long as you feel like you want to. And then do a circular motion the other direction. And then, there you go, Melissa. And then do a figure eight. And then do a figure eight in the other direction. And you can spend as many minutes as you would like doing this. But if you do that, you are dramatically improving the proprioception in your lower spine. A couple other things that you can do. Um, I, uh, most everyone here already knows about traction. We have uh, this thoracic roller, a great way to get increased motion in your thoracic spine, especially because we live in such a society where we're sitting in front of our computer and we've got that FHP, the forward head posture. Um, so it really helps to open up the rib cage to get better movement in your thoracics. Um, Six-way strap. Um, on our, all these, uh, the, we have videos on our website that show how to do these. So if you, if you have, don't know where those are, you can ask us, we'll, we'll show you. A six-way strap, the goal of it is to actually stretch the ligaments in your neck. You increase that, that range of motion, the ability to move, which is going to uh, allow you to have better full range of motion. Uh, over the door traction, a device that you can put over the door comes right down here and applies a force right here and you just simply go down like this. And again, you're just creating a disc pump in the neck to improve the motion uh, to your cervical spine. Um, another thing that I like to call use your head. Um, Melissa knows this one. Um, it's really simple, but it's actually you're going to be using more than your head. But what you do, in fact, I want everyone to... Um, Stand up for me. All right, go ahead, Hongjing. There you go. Stand up, and what I want you to do is with your head, 
kind of look, you know, just a little bit ahead above you. And I want you to, in cursive, write your name with your head. If you have a short name, do it twice. Okay, now I'll, I'll stop you right there just so we don't, you know, take all night. Um, but that's how you do use your head. If you do that every day to get full range of motion, you're going to increase that proprioception in your neck. Then you do it with your back. Do the same thing. Write your name in cursive with your upper back. Then after you've done that, you use your hips. Do the same thing. Full range of motion. Now that's just with your spine. But who has uh, any kind of knee pain, knee discomfort every now and again? Anyone in here? Okay, a couple of you. If you will do the exact same thing with your knees every day, put your feet together like that, and just simply write your name, full range of motion as much as you can, you're going to do the exact same thing to help your knees. Um, do you can do the, actually the same thing, uh, you know, what we just did with the lower back. It's helping your, uh, helping your hip joints as well. Um, another thing you can do, we're off topic of the spine, spinal hygiene, but it is all hygiene. Um, do, do whatever it takes to get full range of motion with your legs as well. And that will help, help your hip joint, which will uh, help minimize the chance of you ever having any kind of hip problems that could lead to things like hip replacement, something like that. Um, Another, you can all sit down. Another thing that is not on the website, I plan on making some videos that describe this. I call these YWTLs. Um, so I do, just so you know, I do some sort of spinal hygiene every day. I don't do all of this every day, but I do some sort of spinal hygiene every day. So some mornings I'll just do six-way strap. Sometimes I'll do the thoracic roller and the six-way strap. Some days I'll just write my head, or write my name with everything. Um, but another thing you can do is what's called YWTLs, and I apologize if I got armpit stuff, but you know, oh, it's they're only slightly colored. Um, so, but make a Y. You stand up against the wall. You have your heels, your hind end, your shoulder, and your head up against the wall, and you just stand there in a Y. And you want to have your hands touching the wall. If they're not, you got to do some stretching, whatever it takes, to be able to get your hands back touching the wall, all those points touching the wall for 30 seconds. If you can do it for 30 seconds, great. Shake it off, relax, and then you do a W. Same thing. Then you do a T, like this. Then you do L's upside down, like this. Same thing, YWTLs. Um, so those are other ways to just simply improve your spine because what those are doing is helping to um, strengthen some of the, uh, the posterior muscles, the muscles in your back to actually get better motion, motion to combat that FHP problem that we've got. All right. So the only way to produce better, longer lives is through chronic, sustained, healthy behavior patterns. I'm going to end on this note. This is a gentleman that came in a, a couple months ago. Actually, he came in about, I think it was five years, well, it was 2011. June 13th, 2011, he came in. This guy has a really interesting story. He didn't have headaches or neck pain or back pain or anything like that. But somebody told him he needed to come and get checked by a chiropractor. He didn't even know me. They didn't even know me. They just said, you need to go see a chiropractor. Because all of a sudden, he started to have blurry vision. It wasn't a gradual thing. It was just all of a sudden he had really blurry vision. And somebody said, I read somewhere that getting a chiropractic adjustment could help that. So he came into my office. We did an assessment. You can see that uh, I'll talk about, I'll show you some pictures here in just a moment, but he had some issues. Mostly were up in his atlas, um, C1 vertebra. We adjusted him. And we set up a time for him to come back where I'd be able to show him what we found and all that kind of stuff. Well, he never showed up. Um, I gave him, I'm, I'm sorry, I showed him everything and I gave him his first adjustment, but then he never came back after that. So we got his first adjustment. We adjusted his atlas, the C1 vertebra only. But I never saw him again. He never re returned our calls. We just didn't know what happened to him. So five years, almost five years passes. And he comes back in. I apologize, you can't see that as well. Oh, I, I can see it okay. Um, this first line, you can see that is the line of his atlas. 
that angle should be about 31 degrees. That's less than 31, but it should be about 31. So that's where he was when he first came in. Now, four years later, now the reason why he came in just a couple of months ago was because all, he, his, he came in and his, uh, he started to have blurry vision again. He told me, he says, you are awesome. Because four years ago, when I came in, I had that blurry vision. You adjusted my atlas that one time. My vision just improved. I've been fine for four years. It was awesome. Was that good enough for him? Well, it was good enough to take a symptom away, wasn't it? But it wasn't good enough for him. And I'll show you why. Because his blurry vision came back. And so what happened is that line is the exact same angle as where it used to be. But... Look at where it is now. So his atlas angle had gotten worse, meaning there's a lot more pressure on the brainstem. Thus, his eye problems came back, and he had other problems as well that he really wasn't even aware of. So um, the key is, is because he wasn't maintaining it, even though he uh, didn't have symptoms, his problem, his actual problem, was getting worse. Does that make sense? So um, the other problem that it's, you may be able to notice, uh, the lines aren't drawn on there, but he actually uh, he started to develop a reversal of the curve between C3 and C4 as well. Um, so the curve was getting worse. So the key is, back to that study that we talked about, getting continued care will actually help maintain the integrity of your spine. It is not the only thing you should do, though. And I hope I've shared with you enough motivation to take control of your health. You need to understand, I cannot make you healthy. All I can do is show you the things that you can do to become healthier, and it's all up to you. Getting adjusted is really important for part of your spinal hygiene, because if you have subluxations, places where those joints are locked, they've got to be unlocked. But you can do an awful lot at home to be able to maintain the integrity of your spine and actually improve it. So thank you very much for coming tonight.